Today on CBS Mornings, Saints legend Steve Gleason and his wife Michelle sat down with David Begnaud. It's Gleason's first full interview since receiving the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage at this year's ESPYs as he continues his battle against ALS. Steve Gleason is here with his wife Michelle. Welcome to Times Square. Thanks for having us. Steve, in the book, your wife Michelle has described your diagnosis as you going from frustrated to fearful to angry. Where are you now? The readers will see that. 13 years of living with this gnarly disease, and I'm over a decade past my expiration date, so I have the wilderness of fear tattooed all over me. Through the process of losing control of everything, the one thing that seemed to be at least somewhat in my control was my mindset. Where am I now, David? I like to think of ALS as something of a postdoctorate research project on being human. It's like I'm investigating what can people do to move from fear to freedom, from suffering to strength, from loss to love, or from hell to heaven. This body may be a prison, but my mind is free. That's beautiful, Steve. I mean, it's the profundity to your words are so deeply moving. Where are you? on that question. I'm still frustrated, angry. Um, it's difficult. Um, I have not um, transcended all like Steve has, um, but I'm also able to move and talk and feel. Um, I'm, I am proud of him for where he is because I, I really can't imagine, you know, I can't, being around it, I can't imagine being, you know, having to do what he does every day, but being on the other side, I'm still taking care of the kids, helping with him, you know, more in a, a real world and wishing that he could do more for him, more for me, more for the kids. At the same time, you know, so grateful that he is here with us and able to do all he does for us. Michelle, you are radically candid in the book about things like intimacy, communication, all that kind of stuff. Be radically candid with us about your struggle with his lack of ability to communicate with you. It is... Like, it is literally sometimes nearly impossible. Um, his technology doesn't always work. His eyes get tired. And, you know, if some days I just want to be like, I just wish today we could have, like, a regular conversation to figure out the next week. And, again, when you have a 12-year-old and a 5-year-old, it's painful to watch because I know how much he wants to be communicating with them. I want to talk to you about that legendary punt block back in 2006. You call it one of your proudest moments. Uh, I wonder what goes through your mind when you relive that moment from 2006. It was undoubtedly a phenomenon that was much more important than winning a football game. But I didn't realize just how much more until a text conversation with Brian Johnson. Brian is a former pastor from New Orleans who was diagnosed with ALS in 2020 and has become a dear and trusted friend. Brian asked me, I'm curious, if you hadn't blocked that punt, do you think your reach and impact on ALS would be the same? My answer was, if I don't block the punt, I'm probably not alive. He was appreciative of my brutal honesty, and his response was, so if you hadn't blocked the punt, then I'm probably not alive either. He said, at the time I was just excited. Some long-haired surfer dude lifted my spirits after I lost everything in Katrina. But you actually saved my life. So many people have told us that our foundation's efforts and support have saved their lives. But if I didn't block that punt, I'm just another has-been football player. It's probable that I just fade away and die anonymously. I don't see any of this happening. But here we are. I did block the punt, David. And this community, my family and friends and their love continue to uplift me and Michelle throughout this crazy, wonderful journey with ALS. Twelve years ago, Mr. Steve, you said we all have a timeline. And given the fact that you're still here today, how is living like you have a timeline different than maybe it was 12 years ago? Yes, David, 
I find the truth that we all have a timeline. Absolutely beautiful. And how about this, David? Live like today is the last day you will be able to move, talk, and breathe on your own. How would your perspective shift? Will you be more appreciative and less concerned about achievement or material success? Knowing this is your last day of moving, when you hug your child or your partner, when you hold their hand or run your hand through their hair, knowing this is the last time, how much will you appreciate the preciousness of the moment? If I were to request anything from people, it would be practice living with a timeline. Please fully appreciate and truly love this wonderful life. Mic drop.